What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Warhammer Quest. I have gone, I've taken a cold shower, hopefully my mood will be slightly better. I was, I was definitely salty after the last combat, it was rough. Let's see what we're up against. The creature lies within waiting patiently for your warriors to attack as if it knows something your party does not. Vampire Thrall, Zombie, and Crypt Zombie. I'm assuming the Crypt Zombies are probably like gang affiliated upgraded versions of normal zombies. There are a lot of bad dudes up in here. I think it's probably wisest if we pull this fight back into this hallway maybe and make it so that they can't actually bring their numbers to bear and additionally so that they have trouble that's essentially what I'm going for is I just want them to have trouble oh I messed up I made a mistake okay so eh, we need to figure this out let's shadow bolt there I guess that seems like a reasonably decent decision this crypt zombie, though, is going to club us in the face in just a second. And then we're probably also going to get this terrifying scream or whatever dropped on us from right over here. I messed up. I did my characters in the wrong order. We definitely don't want him to join the combat. That's the one thing we know for sure. This I promise you. We do not want him to enter this combat in any fashion. Luckily, these guys are really, really slow, so we should be able... I'm not making fun of your intelligence. Don't get angry, monsters. I'm not making fun of your intelligence, but... Okay, so we're going to find out what this Crypt Zombie does right now. He's going to miss. At least he doesn't have multiple attacks. That's always the big, like, tearing factor for me. This is the bare minimum. At least he doesn't get multiple attacks. Let's see if we can get him off of our mage. And that's a Crypt Zombie. Let's get rid of some of the little, like, chaff guys real fast, if we can. Since that is the ultimate goal. He's got six magic. My suggestion would be... Shadow Daggers. As many Shadow Daggers as we can drop on the enemy. If I can clear this little area right here and get everybody unpinned, I would be really, really happy. I realize we have people that are at low health. But given the proficiency of our wizard right now, so that's a Crypt Zombie down, right? Okay, and this one's a Crypt Zombie too. So that's two of the Crypt Zombies down. How many of them remain? Let's find out. So there's a Zombie, 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 Crypt Zombie. So it looks like they're a little bit darker. That's how you know the difference. I will more than likely... Let's go all in. Let's spread out a little bit. Is he still debuffed, by the way? I think everybody resisted. The Malediction of Nagash. What does Malediction of Nagash do? Minus 5 strength. Oh shit, that's not good. That's actually pretty detrimental considering he's a melee character. Although this guy doesn't have much HP, so let's get on him. Oh yeah. That did nerf his strength pretty resoundingly. Okay. Well, I think we've got enough willpower to clear the room. It's like the enemy cheeses, therefore I cheese. I'm going to save my stake, actually. I don't think we need it. I don't think it's necessary. Let's see what we can finish off right here first. And then his gun is jammed. Okay, so let's Bane of Undead him as many times as we can. And if we can just clear him from the field, I'll feel better about our prospects. Do you have an attack left? You do not have an attack left. I was going to let him take a shot at finishing off Vlad. Vlad's now down. We'll leave that for him. He's got a little bit of willpower left. So let's get started on the Crypt Zombie. His will is shaken, but it'll come back. It'll come back. It's not that big of a deal. We still have to worry about the possibility of getting ads. So, we're not out of the woods yet. But we are still kind of like on the edges. Like, the, the trees are getting thinner. The grass is getting less squishy because, you know, forest grass is squishy. I don't know how many people here grew up next to forests. There's lots of forests in California. And you spend a lot of time going to them for, like, science classes and things. But the ground in the forest is always damp. No matter how hot it is outside, the ground is always damp. That's what I always noticed. Let's give him a shot at the Crypt Zombie. There it is. Get yourself some XP. Buy yourself something nice. On this side, he still has... Does he have what's overwhelmed mean? Your warrior is being overwhelmed by zombies. For each zombie surrounding the warrior, his toughness and weapon skill are reduced while defending from attacks. But his weapon skill looks pretty good to me. It's at 8. Maybe it's not, like, displayed as part of the UI. There we go. 
Game finally cut us a break. We got 200 gold. The monster is vanquished. The realm should be safe, or as safe as it can ever get in the Empire. The warriors search the chamber, hoping to find some loot or secret room full of riches, but there's nothing. Vlad was either broke or his stash is situated in a different location, away from the grabby hands of the adventurers. See, like, I feel like the game is way too stingy with loot, and I think that's probably to drive you towards the item shop. And I feel that that's just, like, not acceptable. That's not forgivable. Like, the game is really, really stingy with loot. Like, when you first start out, unless the unless the game tells you you're going to get loot for doing something, don't believe it. It's lying to you. Because, honestly, there's been so many quests now where we get nothing. Like, absolutely nothing at the end, and it's just like, K. And now we have, like, level ups and stuff to pay for. I really do feel like the game is essentially just like a, a microtransaction scheme. I'm starting to get that feeling. Definitely starting to get that feeling. Because you never have enough money to buy anything nice. Ever. You never have enough money to buy anything nice. You very, very rarely, and by the time you accumulate money, somebody levels up, so you've got to spend a bunch of money leveling somebody up, which should not be the case. So, it's, it just kind of sucks. It just kind of sucks. The game doesn't suck. It's a good game. That's the problem, is it's a good game that is completely and totally destroyed by the microtransaction scheme that's hiding behind it. Like, the developers need to remove it. Remove all microtransactions. Get rid of them. Make you get more gold from every dungeon, make things cheaper and more fun to play, because as of right now, the game feels very grindy, and for a phone game, that's okay. But for a game that, you know, you're playing on your PC that you already paid for, there's the expectation that everything will already be unlocked. Let's start... I don't know what's in Vorschdorf. What's in Vorschdorf? Let's go to... Can we go to Vorschdorf? I guess we gotta do this one first, then we can go to Vorschdorf. I'm just going to try and uncover some of the map and see what quests we can get. Hopefully we don't get any nasty events on the way down here. There we go. All better. All tunnels lead to Skaven Blight. A crone approaches the warriors, and before they can even nod their heads in greeting, she spits directly in the face of one of your party. Your warriors are momentarily baffled, and one even raises a weapon in vengeance, but before he can act, the crone shouts out, Call yourselves warriors, strolling around while there's orc shaman at large, making our lives a misery. Get yourself down to the dungeon and slay the beast. The party better do as the crone asks, or you risk... Another face full of phlegm. Phlegm. Why is there a G in that word? It seems so unnecessary. Phlegm. So they said, like, they didn't... She said... They said she spit on our face. They didn't say she hawked on our face. There's a difference. If she hawked a loogie on my face, she's getting clipped. I don't care who she is. Fair is fair. You won't hawk a loogie in anybody's face. And if you get punched in the mouth for hawking a loogie in somebody's face, nobody's gonna feel bad for you, no matter how small or, like, diminutive you are. They'd be like, well, they did hock a loogie in your face. I mean, to be fair, there's little yellow chunks of everything inside your face, which is making me just feel kind of just like, Bleh! already. It's, oh, so gross. So gross. We'll build up some iron resolve, although it's not really going to help us much. Oh, yeah, I should probably swap him in for fire bullets since it's an orc dungeon. There we go. Fire bullets. Anybody else that does not have... There we go. We'll swap that on in. Anybody else that does not have a full inventory right now, get yourself a full inventory as quickly as possible. And then we'll go back. Alright, we're looking good right there. Looking reasonably decent so far. We haven't had any nasty jump-ins just yet. Which makes me happy. Considering the way the last couple dungeons have gone, I feel good about it. Feel good about it. I would rather just have an uneventful dungeon at this point. Try and get everybody nice and situated. I was thinking about this the other day. I used to get migraines all the time when I was a kid. And, like, why does that just, like, stop? Like, when I'm an adult, I haven't had a migraine probably in, like, 12 years 10 years maybe but like when i was a kid i used to get them all the time and they'd knock me out for like a day or two at a time and you just have to lay in bed all the time is there like a migraine specialist in the nerd castle audience like is there any reason why that would happen it's like the same way with my dad my dad had migraines all through his 20s and like his early 30s and then like as he got older he just stopped getting migraines it just like stopped happening it's weird it's like one of those afflictions that nobody knows how to explain but like everybody has had one or at least, like, if you haven't had one, you don't want to have one. They're the worst. A migraine, I'd rather have the stomach flu. I'd rather have anything. Food poisoning, I'd rather have anything other than a migraine. Oh, man, migraines are so bad. They are so bad. They are a miserable experience, no matter who you are. Let's get in here and deal some damage. Okay, there's four right there. We'll fire an arrow across the room at him. Do five. That works out. Maybe clear one of these guys out to maybe give him a better chance of not taking damage on this turn. I am trying to level him. That is the point. So, actually, if I could use Blade of Night, yeah, let's prop him up a little bit. Prop him up a little bit. I don't know why he only gets one attack when everybody else gets two. Maybe it's not the caster's level. I thought it was based... Is it based on the caster's level? Proportional to their battle level. Oh, no, it's the targeted person's level. So that explains why he only gets the one. 
Alright, well I tried. I mean, I'm trying to prop him up, but there's not much I can do here. There's five damage. He just had a, like, he has a girl voice. Is our character a female? That would be weird for Warhammer. There's not a lot of female characters in Warhammer. Like, Warhammer continues that grimdark, grimdark sort of feeling where the female characters are few and far between a lot of the time. be interesting if our elf was a female. I don't know. I just hadn't thought about it, but now that I think about it, the entire character list in this game is female. Or, I is male, I'm sorry. Let's throw a bunch of attacks on him so that maybe he can get rid of this orc. He's got a low chance to hit. Like, he's got a 45% to hit, so... He might not be able to do it, but still. It's worth it just to give him a shot and maybe see if he can get some levels in between here and there. Because, like, the difference between, like, a level 1 character and a level 2 character is pretty huge. We got a Warhammer, so actually we got some good loot right there that we can sell for some cash. Hopefully we have a good run because we need the money. Really, really badly we need the money. I'm hoping that at some point this character becomes like a turret. And we can just be like rat a tat a rat a tat a rat a tat a rat a tat a as he fires off or she fires off. I'm going to call her a she from now on. I mean, Sirenvel, Serenavel sounds like a male name, to be honest, from my vague Warhammer knowledge. But I don't know. Face is covered and I can't see any boobily, so no way to tell other than that. I mean, the voiceover definitely sounded female, so I don't know. Maybe he's just got, like, a real high effeminate voice, though. It happens. Alright, so we hit a dead end over there, which is a little bit disappointing, because it means we got to backtrack a long ways, but oh well. Gives us a chance to kind of accumulate energy and get ready for the fight ahead. I do wish that he had a few more, so Winds of Magic, I wish that he had a couple. Maybe he does at high level, like permanent buffs that last the remainder of the dungeon, but cost like 10 Winds of Power or something. It'd be nice. It'd be nice. I think the big difference, too, is that some of our characters are still rocking default loadouts, whereas, like, our mage, for example, has had, like, every single piece of loot he could possibly have drop, which makes him far more efficient than everybody else, and so I'm leaning disproportionately on certain people. When we had our Barbarian, eight zombies, huh? Eight zombies in an orc dungeon, too. All right. Well, let's get started. Anybody you can kill, try to get the kill. We've got, oh, his Winds of Magic drained. He had seven in the previous turn that we had on reserve, and it's disappointing that that happens. I don't know why when you get ambushed, you start out with no Winds of Magic. It's a strange design choice because it starts up with us having the first turn, so why should we not have all of the benefits of starting a new turn? i.e. the ability to use Winds of Magic. It just seems a little strange to me. Let's go ahead and put a round on him. There's 12 damage right there. Start cleaving some of these little dudes too. Start clipping people with Bane of the Undead as well. Leave him a ranged attack at least so that maybe he can score a kill. We'll leave the rest for the wizard. He'll probably be able to kill most of these guys just because his skill has gotten so high with the sword. He's got so many attacks too. If you can't have quality in this game, quantity can definitely make up for it, although not against anything with a fortified health pool, like a troll, for example. Like, if you're just missing too much with a troll, they regenerate so much at the beginning of every turn that really they negate an entire character's worth of damage every single turn. So if you're consistently missing, like, over and over and over again, trolls become a major concern, and they're actually one of the few things in this game I'm terrified of, like, trolls... Um, 10 minutes. We don't need anybody to get health. We got that was the goblin thing. Oh, we got a river troll. And he's alongside our back lines. Is he worse? Oh, no, he's easier. Okay, so that's not too bad. I'm going to try and get... Oh, actually, yeah, we got a bunch of little goblins with us, too. I didn't realize that there was more than that. Okay, we'll bring him back over here. And with Serenaville, start getting rid of some of these little goblins. We do have a counteracting measure here. And then on this side, we'll have people line up. He has no Winds of Magic. Actually, I'd prefer that he start out... I'd like to burn this character. We'll see how we do right here. He's got Troll Stench. I don't know what Troll Stench does. Decreased chance to be hit with a melee weapon, so that explains the finicky numbers. Still somehow got him, though. That's amazing. Take a shot at him. There it is. Very nice. I can't promise this fight's going to go well. He gets like a million attacks. But... Oh no, he only got one attack. This must be like a diminutive, crappy version. I don't know why I'm so drawn to diminutive as a word right now, but I am. I'm going to try and give the kill to the elf, but... It's difficult. Es muy difícil. Yeah, that two wounds ain't going to do it. Let's... I don't know if he's immune to pinning or what. He might be immune to pinning. I'm not sure. There we go. Get him with the burning. Get a couple attacks off right here. 
he does appear to be regenerating. And actually, on this side, I can hit him with the shadow daggers real fast. I hit you with my shadow dagger. And then we go over here. There we go. I'll sweep him back into combat if I have to, but... I'd rather not have anybody pin near a tro- Oh, good. Additives. I love additives being in my combat. And so now because we got ambushed, he gets zero... Like I said, if you get ambushed, you get zero wins of magic. And that's just something you get to, like, live with. I'll try and clear out everything I can with the characters I have available right now. There it is. Let's keep on the troll since he is the largest concern. Without winds of magic, this kind of sucks. Let's work on some of these rats, I guess. There we go. And we'll fire another shot at him, maybe. He's still going to miss. On this side, we'll get a 12 and a 7. And so the troll's out of the way. Either way, that feeds like XP. I don't mind when our big guy kills off one of the larger XP foes. Simply because it does feed into making ours have like at least a ringer. Somebody that can come along and actually clear the battlefield if we need to. We're at the point right now where if we catch any more adds, we're in deep doo-doo. I'm going to try Finger of Life because I'm feeling gambly right now. Oh, I, did, I, said, I thought I said Finger of Life. Okay, Blade of Night's fine too. I mean, five wounds is good. I'll take it over nothing. Move him up to here. Let's give Serenavel the chance to maybe kill that zombie for extra XP. Because he is our, our lobby of the group here. Alright, and so now that the undead have been dealt with, they've been sent back to a grave. Oh good, we got an iron shield. This might turn out to be a valuable run for us and an amethyst. That's good. You know why they're called amethyst? It's because there's an old Greek word for drunk called methustos. I don't know if that's still the word for drunk in Greek. I can't. My One of my Greek fans will have to fill me in. But essentially in ancient Greek, the word was methustos for drunk. And so it's ah methustos. I'm giving you your, your geology trivia of the day. It's amethustos, the lack of being drunk, because amethysts were believed back in those days to cure drunkenness. They made you more resistant to the effects of wine and alcohol. So, amethyst. There you go. There's your random little piece of trivia for the day. Hopefully you like it. How I learned that, I'm not sure. I think I got that out of one of my trivia books somewhere. I actually don't think I learned that in a geology class. I think I learned that in a trivia book. Alright. That's fine. I'm gonna, we'll wait one more turn. And if his winds of power are up and kicking, I guess we'll go for healing mists. I don't want to wait around too long because we've already been forestalled enough in this dungeon. Man, we just cannot get anybody taken care of here. How much does Void Master cost? Four? I could actually Void Master multiple people. Yeah, let's do that. Let's Void Master somebody. Void Master him. And then on this side, we'll use the remaining to do a healing mist right here. There we go. Hopefully we don't get any ads. So there it is. Uh, we got the hobbit thing again. Apparently he's still wandering around offering random strangers lunch. It's a nice thing to do, but frankly we're a little bit busy right now. On this side, we have problems to solve, don't we? Let's put some shots down range on some of these other guys. I just, I don't like the error boys. They're very, very concerning. They're an issue that I don't like to deal with. Bring the Troll Slayer down here. Since he already shot, we'll give him a chance to kill this guy so that at least he's using some of his attacks. And then we will... Well, this is going to turn into kind of like a lackluster turn anyways. Not much I can do about it because of the whole, like, you can't attack then move rule. With zero winds of magic, I'm probably just going to leave him hanging back for now. We'll let all the Orc Boys do what they're going to do. And if they end up dealing a lot of damage, we'll try and deal with that when the time comes. Okay, they didn't deal too much damage. We're alright. Over here, I'm going to move Sirenville into melee. He's going to take a shot at one of the error boys. He's going to miss. That's alright. He probably doesn't have the proficiency to kill one of these guys in melee either. So I'll leave it to the Witch Hunter since he tends to be a little bit better at it. We'll also have him put one down range. Preferably killing that guy off, which is good. He's pinned, which means unfortunately he's stuck at the spot for right now. Got the option to healing mist right here, and I'm going to take that opportunity. I can't guarantee it's going to heal him fully, but at least I can guarantee it's going to heal something. Take the edge off the arrow that's now been stuck into you. Or I guess take the point off the arrow. Arrows have edges, though, too. They have a point and they have edges. Ow! A seven damage arrow. Not bad. It's a pretty good arrow shot right there as far as the damage roll goes. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. This guy should go down now. Oh, or maybe not. I could be wrong. 
It's happened before. It's happened on occasion. He's making all of his shots right now. He's in a bad mood. He's ready to kill himself some orcs. He's getting to the spirit of the orc killing season. There we go. We got that taken care of. Everybody's good to go. We'll wait for this orc to finally fall down and leave us be. That's a lot of blood for just four damage. Like, whenever we hit an enemy, there is a lot of blood. Like, all over the place. It gets around cave herbs. Fantastic. Those don't seem to be very useful, but I guess I'll bring them because I don't like to waste things, and 20 gold is 20 gold. I can't complain about the gold allocations in this game and then not bring everything that's valuable afterwards. I really do, like, wish that they would remove the microtransactions for gold and stuff and just buff the amount of gold that drops. Like, just double it, basically. Because there's lots of gear in this game and you never have enough money to afford any of it. Is the problem. You just basically have to rely on the drops, basically. And so gold becomes a resource that you almost exclusively use for leveling up. Bring them over to there. We'll get everybody lined up. I like this. We're good. We're going to the next room. This banquet doesn't look that delicious, though. It's only skulls. Apparently, they're just having skulls for lunch. I don't feel like that would be very nutritious. Obviously, I feel like it would more than fulfill your calcium intake for the day. But it seems unpleasant. It seems like it might damage the gums on the way through. Just a casual observation. I feel like it would not be kind on the gums. Like every time I go and I eat... Oh, you know what I really, really hate? When you eat tortilla chips and a tortilla chip gets stuck in your gum and it's like back in a position where your tongue can't get to it. Oh, I hate that so much. Also, the husks of corn when you eat popcorn, the little husks that get stuck all up in your mouth. I don't like that either. It's unpleasant. It makes me sad. Let's go ahead and cleave this guy in half. We'll get in here and we'll start getting to work with some of the arrow works and the gun works and all that fun stuff. He's got enough winds of magic to throw a shadow bolt at these guys, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. If he can kill off a fistful of them, I won't complain. Okay, well, a semi-successful turn. The goblin boss is not down, but we did manage to kill quite a few. Honestly, the nice thing about magic is that it never misses. That's one of the big benefits that I would add about running a double magic team, is that if you have even a triple magic team with the Archmage and just one person to tank, that's what I would add, is that magic always hits. And so while in the early game, until you get equipped, it's somewhat random how much wins of magic you get, once your magic users are actually equipped with items that augment their power gain, you're pretty much in a situation where you get, like, a very, very large amount of power every single turn, and it allows them to fuel attacks that always hit. So, running multiple mages is nice if you can make it work. He's not pinned anymore. We'll get started on this cat. <laughs> he's not a cat. He's a goblin. Splatter cat doesn't know his animals. Let's go ahead and kill that guy off. We're good. 40 more gold. We've got metal scraps. Okay. I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping our archer levels up in this map so then we can actually move on to some of the other stuff. I think our archer would be fine in a level 4 area as long as everybody else is kind of leveled up too. I don't like that I have to do all this grinding on camera and that's in fact probably one of the reasons I'm not going to do a full playthrough is just because I feel like I do a lot of like random pointless missions just to get XP and extra money. But I want to feel good about the game when I finish it off so I think I'd probably at least like to finish off Sterling maybe. Within the chamber is Gorgrub. The monster spies the warriors lurking outside and gives them a malevolent grin. Well, oh. Well, don't stand on ceremony. Come in, says the orc shaman. Let's get this over with. It says raising an evil looking blade. There we go. I wasn't ready for it. I had, uh, I had to move. Oh, you lot. Get in here and test me, chopper. There we go. I'll give you a good one. You notice the first half was a little off. It's because I don't do it very often anymore. I used to practice it in the shower and stuff because I always wanted to be a voice actor for Orcs and Warhammer 40k. Never got the opportunity though. Hopefully at some point in life I'll get the opportunity. It sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. Just being able to sit around and just do my Orc impression nonstop. So I figure I should probably start working on some of these random ranged Orcs. Otherwise this first turn is not going to go well for us. Ranged characters have a very, very flat chance to hit, and they tend to be a little bit more proficiency. They tend to have the proficiency for killery that becomes very, very problematic very, very quickly. So if you have like 10 archers in a room, you might not have a good time. There we go. So killed off a couple of them. That's a lot more manageable. I have no clue who this shaman's going to go after. However, I am glad that we managed to thin out the herd with regards to the arrow attacks, because a few more of those arrow attacks, and I feel like we would have been in deep, deep doo-doo. Go for attack right there. We got the kill. Almost got a double kill. Good for you, new guy. Good for you. 
We'll bring this over here. I think I'll probably situate him to start dealing with the Shaman as well as him. I may use a healing spell right here to get him back on his feet. And on this side, that leaves us with some Winds of Magic. I'll throw a Blade of Night on him because I'm a nice guy and I'd like to give him a better chance to level up. He's got a, he's got a reasonably decent chance to hit, so might as well. He's got Cutting Edge Blade. Three Strength, okay, and Magical Resistance, which makes it so that he will shrug off effects. That's fine. I'd rather give the kill to him, so I'm going to wait on it. The HP pool is low enough right now to where I think we'll probably be okay. I just need him to be right here. And since we've got so much extra mana right now, I'm going to use the Great College Hat. I'm just going to keep feeding him, essentially, Blades of Night until he gets the kills. There it is. So he's got a couple Blades of Night. How much HP does he have? 12. He shouldn't be able to kill him. He should be able to double miss, though. I'm not positive that the Troll Slayer wouldn't kill him, though. So there's five. There's three. And he's out of attacks. Go ahead and just feed it all in. I mean, give him, no, not Finger of Life. Don't give him the Finger of Life right now. We don't need that kind of drama. There we go. Feed him a couple of Blade of Knights, like everything you have, just to see if we can maybe get him to fish out the kill. Come on. You can do it, new guy. Oh, man. Okay, so I guess we'll wait a turn. It's all right. I'm not in that big of a, I'm not in that bad of a mood about it. There we go, new guy. Get in there. Feed him a couple more blades of night to see if he can get it. There it is. That'll be a nice little grip of XP for him. The warriors fight the creature and manage through sheer tenacity to slay it and all of its lackeys in the chamber. Exhausted, the warriors trudge back to the dungeon and go above ground, happy to be out in the open again. They did a cursory search of the exit and found a few gold crowns, but nothing they can retire on. And there it is. He should be able to get a pretty good fistful of XP from that. I mean, it looks like other people did better. For example, Wolfgang Justice, who shows up and wipes out everything every single time we step in a dungeon, but still... That'll give us Vorchdorf, which we can check out. I'm not really too interested in going anywhere else. Like, Warden seems nice, but maybe we'll try and do... Maybe that's what I can agree to. I think trying to do all the quests in Sterland, that's not bad. It's not too bad. That leaves us basically going... I think that's the final place. So there'll be a quest here, a quest here, a quest here, and a quest here. That seems all right. That seems like it'll work. Let's go to Vorchdorf. We'll see what happens here, and then we'll break off the episode. I think that's a compromise. I think that gives us more than enough episodes to feel the game out. And then after that, kind of jump in. The village of Vorstdorf is surrounded by a battered wooden stockade. A lone guard in decrepit armor blocks the entrance by an open gate that leans ominously on its knackered hinges. As you approach, he saunters forward, bent spear in hand. Oh, I know you saw it, comes a tinny voice from the rusty helmet. It's adventuring you're after, is it? Well, then you've come to the right place. There's someone in there that could use your services, he says, thumbing over his shoulder into the village. You interested? Your warriors are ushered into an alehouse just around the corner called the Feisty Boar. The Feisty Boar, like its owner, is a small establishment. The tap room is dominated by a great cooking pot nestling on some red hot coals. Within a bubbling brown stew, slosh is dangerously close to the rim of the cauldron. It smells delicious. Precariously leaning over the pot whilst chopping beets into the stew with her stubby fingers as a female halfling stood on a tall bar stool. I heard you were coming, she says, barely looking up. You'll get free food and board while you're here and reward when the job's done. It's not much, but it's all I have. Without a pause, she finishes the beats, grabs a chicken from a nearby cage, and twists his head off. Even as the dead bird's wings twitch and flap, she plucks the hapless creature in a flurry of feathers. All the while, she continues her dour exposition. It's my son Jasper. I sent him out looking for mushrooms. He's wandered too far from the village and got himself caught stealing off the bloody goblins. I need you to find Jasper and bring him home, even if those stinking greenskins have gone and slain him. All right, well... I'm fine bringing a body home. Let's go ahead and level up our Way Watcher here and just kind of like see what happens. Are we having, is the menu not going to open? Oh, that's fun. Hold on, let me see if I can fix this somehow. Let me see if this is actually busted or what's going on here. It looks like we can get out of Vorchdorf by actually ending the turn, but there it goes. Okay. Just had to restart it real fast. The Adventurer's Guild. I don't want to retire anybody. I need you to go to the training grounds, actually. Let's see what he gets. Weapon skill 4, wounds 15, ranged attacks 2. 
Ray Watcher attacks with a critical strike, ignoring all of their opponent's toughness. Not bad. Not bad. Weapon skill 4 is actually a really big deal, too. Weapon skill 4 is one of those things that makes you an average melee combatant rather than being subpar. So anyways, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerdcast for the next episode of Warhammer Quest. I look forward to seeing you all in further episodes. That's what we'll do. We'll do all of Sterland. I promise. And so that should give us a good 20 episodes, I think. I'll see y'all later. Hi-do, everybody.